Alright guys, this is your next SPI. It is um, LS 2.1, develop a model to depict the cycling of matter, including carbon and oxygen, including the flow of energy among biotic and abiotic parts of an ecosystem. And I'm going to tell you, that is a whole lot of words to say. Talk about the carbon dioxide and oxygen cycle and how things that get broken down in our ecosystem contribute to that cycle. So here we go. All right, so like always, we're going to start off with our terms to know. We have the carbon dioxide oxygen cycle. It's an exchange of oxygen, or O2, and carbon dioxide, which is CO2, between living things. Um, it's basically, well, you could use us as an example. We inhale oxygen, we exhale carbon dioxide. That's, that's the cycle. All right, and a cycle in that case is a complete round or series that repeats itself in a regular sequence. It has a start, a middle a ending, and then it repeats. All right, now we're moving on to biotic. And biotic and abiotic were terms that were actually on the standard. And biotic is an ecosystem made up of living things. Bio means life. So think of things that are bio-related, um, life, living. And then we've talked about words that have the A prefix, means not or no. So abiotic, non-living, bio-living, so not living, parts of an environment that affects the organism and the ecosystem. So we're going to talk about that in a minute, about how things that might not be living can still be contributing to the ecosystem. All right, now we have autotroph. Um, we talked about autotrophs and heterotrophs earlier when we talked about, I think, kingdoms and domains, and we talked about you know, certain types of cells um, made their own food, like a plant cell. So they would be autotrophic. And we talked about certain things like a bacteria cell that could not make its own food, which would be heterotrophic. So here's our refresher. Autotrophic. Organisms that make its own food, um, also known as a producer. An example would be plants. So then heterotroph, um, organism that can't make its own food, AKA a consumer, such as us. All right, now we're gonna talk about decomposition. It's the process of rotting. What I mean by that, it's breaking down a compound. Um, in this instance, I'm giving you an example of a water molecule, and if it was going to go through a decomposition reaction, it would break all three of those molecules apart. And then you would have a hydrogen, a separate hydrogen, and a separate oxygen. It was decomposed, it broke it down. It doesn't just mean like the physical act of rotting, it could mean breaking things down. And then decomposers are the organisms that break down organic matter in plants and animals. And we talked about these, bacteria and fungi are sometimes decomposers. All right, so on the back of your paper, I want you to draw a picture. It doesn't have to look just like this. Um, it can look way better, <laughs> which I'm sure is what's going to happen because my picture, not so much. Um, I spent like 15 minutes looking for that cow online because I tried to draw one and that was an epic fail. And then I looked at some of the cows online and they didn't look like cows. And so this is the best I could do. So here's your cow. So you got to have at least three um, living animals. So we've got our bird, we've got our cow, and we've got a little fish in here swimming. That is supposed to be his dorsal fin, but it looks more like a mohawk. So just go with it. Be happy I drew those and not like a rabbit. Although I think I could draw a rabbit. Let's try. So if I put this here and this here, and I give us a big bunny ear, some feet, and a bushy tail, and I'm change my font color. Give me an eye. Oops. Give me an eye and an eye. My eye 
eyes are hard to do with this pen. I'm going to give us a nose and some whiskers. See? That's why I didn't draw a cow. Because even my bunny rabbit's struggling. Alright, anyways. So, rough draft of our picture here. We have things that are consumers and producers. Okay? So, we have this bird. It's a consumer. It cannot make its own food. It has to... Um, find it and eat something that's that's already made. I always think of seagulls. Seagulls eat anything, so they're consumers. Um, they're heterotrophic. This seagull is going to give off CO2. Remember, we're also lumping this all together and talking about how all these things contribute to the carbon and oxygen cycle and how all of this contributes to that. So that bird is going to give off CO2, this rabbit is going to give off CO2, this cow is going to give off CO2, my little fishy is going to give off CO2, and that all occurs through the process of respiration. You know, when you breathe, you give off carbon dioxide. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about then is what the producers do give off. These are autotrophs. Um, this tree gives off O2. My, my flower gives off O2. My grass gives off O2. Those all give off O2. So, I meant to make that brown. Need to have a little hole right there for our owl. And we're going to flush out our tree a little more. Here's a branch, and here's a branch, and here's a branch, and here's a branch. And then we're just going to color it a little bit. Oh, I should go with the lighter color. How about we go with, like, this color? Alright, so here's our tree. And our tree, or our flower, or our grass, they all go through photosynthesis. And remember, we talked about photosynthesis when we talked about cell organelles and when we talked about the plant cell. And so they take in sunlight, they convert that sunlight energy into glucose and oxygen, and in that process, the O2 that they made is given off, and then they take that glucose and they use that glucose for food, and it gets turned into energy for them. So, during the process of photosynthesis, we give off O2. And that O2 is then going to be used by this cow down here. And this cow is then going to give off his CO2, which is going to go back to that tree. Um, this grass is going to give off my pen is not writing. It's going to give off O2 to this rabbit. And then this rabbit is going to give off this CO2. Um, I know you're wondering, why is there a little poop emoji down there by the cow? Well, because what happens is the cow um, eats this grass. There's a cow eating the grass. And when he eats the grass, this is a big, long story, and I'm going to explain it the best I can, and we'll talk about it in class. But cows have, like, four chambers in their stomach. And the first compartment or chamber is called the rumens, and that part, um, before the stomach goes through the rest of digestion, that part goes through like a fermentation process and it takes the nutrients from the plant or the grass that he's eating and it goes into and it ferments and then it goes into digestion and then when the cow's gotten all its nutrition nutrients out he his digestive system removes the solid waste which is why that's down here it's an example of our solid waste that solid waste over time is going to break down and decompose 
and it's going to give the nutrients from what the cow didn't need back into the soil and grass. So this black stuff is representing the decomposition and the nutrients being seeped back into the ground. And so this is part of that beginning statement about how non-living things, abiotic things, contribute to the biotic ecosystem. That waste from the cow is no longer living. It's been expelled from him and it's broken down. It's been decomposed and it has then been put back into the environment and back into the soil. The cow's going to eat more grass and he's going to pick up some of those same nutrients that he released, you know, months and years later, but he's going to use them. And so that's part of a cycle, that de decomposition cycle, that abiotic biotic cycle. Um, I think we should add a word for your definitions. Go back to the front side. And I want you to write this word down. And then um, we're going to talk about, actually, we'll just talk about it in class. Just remind me. Oh, that's a horrible star. And Miss Foshi reminded us both that we need to talk about. Oh, I did something. Fermentation. Remind us tomorrow.